Amen, amen, amen. Praise the Lord, everybody. This is Prophet Benny Baker, and we are so excited that you are part of this broadcast today. Thank you so much. And listen, thank you so much for your weekly participation. I mean, so many of you, you watch this broadcast, this video, whether it's live there on television or it's on YouTube or there on Facebook or so, so many ways we have to connect with our friends and our partners. We're so thankful for you taking the time to tune in and watch this video. I, I believe you're going to be blessed today. I've got an exciting word. I want to continue to talk to you about revival. Man, I love revival. Uh, I always have. You know, uh, as, as a pastor, as a traveling minister and evangelist, I, I've seen some awesome revivals in my lifetime. I've seen God just pour out His Spirit in such an awesome, exciting way. And one of the things that I've learned is there, is, there are ingredients for revival. Now, I'm, I'm not going to tell you that there's a specific format that if you follow this specific format that... Um, you know, you're going to have an extended meeting or uh, this is going to happen in this meeting or that's going to happen. But what I can tell you is you follow the word of God and you uh, take to, take note and take, take to heart what I'm going to share with you. We're going to give you ingredients for revival. I'm going to tell you, you will experience personal revival, revival in your church, revival in your ministry. And uh, we kind of... Uh, last week we talked just a little bit about tarrying, but today I want to talk to you about waiting. I think waiting is a lost art in the church. Uh, society is a right now society. We want everything right now. We don't want to wait on our food. If we go to a restaurant and it takes too long to get our food, we get upset. If we uh, get in line at the grocery store and the line's too long, you know, we get upset. We, we have become a people that we want it fast. We want it now. We want to do as little work as possible, uh, put as little work as possible into it. But listen, revival and the things of God, just it's just not that way. The kingdom of God is just not instantaneous. Now, you, uh, this is coming from a minister that preaches the now message. I think that there are moments, there are times where we have to believe God for right now. If there is a mom out there and you've got an unlost, uh, you've got an unsaved child, you need that child saved right now. If you're out there and you've got a bill that's due that you don't have the money for and it's it's due today, you need that money right now, don't you? If you've got a child that is hooked on drugs and needs a miracle. You need that miracle right now. If you have a disease, a terminal sickness, or, or something that's causing you pain, and you need, you need God to touch you, you need that right now. And I believe that God can move in the now. But when we're talking about revival, and we're talking about waiting on the Spirit of God, if you remember, one of the last instructions Jesus gave the church was to go to Jerusalem and to wait. To wait. What are you? What are they waiting on? They were waiting on a move of God. They were waiting on a move of the Holy Ghost. Listen, I, I don't want to miss a thing in the kingdom of God. I don't want to miss a miracle. I don't want to miss an opportunity. I don't want to miss a divine connection. Amen. This. So one of the things I've learned about people and divine connection, somebody will talk you right out of your divine connection. Um, Somebody that has spoken in my life so many times and has such, have been such a benefit and such a blessing to me. Um, there were people that tried to talk me out of that connection. It would have been one of the biggest mistakes of my life to miss that moment, to miss that opportunity. But uh, thankfully, I followed the Holy Ghost and, and not people. I believe, in, I believe in instruction. I believe in taking sound advice. I believe those things. And, but with that being said, um, you've got to follow the Holy Spirit. You've got to follow your heart. And so today, I want to talk to you just a little bit about tarrying. I want to talk to you just a little, a little bit about waiting. Remember back in the old day how we would tarry at the altar for the Holy Ghost? I still believe in getting in that altar and tarrying and waiting. Um, oh, I guess it had to have been 2008. I had been, been invited to go down to Southern Iowa and preach. Oh, just a just a conference. It, it wasn't a it wasn't a revival revival meeting. I was still pastoring at the time. It was not a revival meeting. We didn't. There was no expectation of there being extended meetings or or anything like that. We were just invited 
to do one night of a conference. There was other speakers that were supposed to be there. Uh, there was just a lot going on. Uh, and again, we had prepared. We were able to get away for one night. I don't remember the message I preached that night. I don't, I don't know the scripture that I took. I, I don't remember, but I, I talked about revival and talked about a little bit of what I'm sharing with you right now. But in the midst of that, something happened at the end of that service. I, again, I, 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 I couldn't tell you um, exactly what was said, what was done. I, I don't know, but I closed my Bible and the Spirit of God hit. Woo, come on somebody. I, I believe the Spirit of God's going to touch somebody today. I, I literally closed my Bible and was uh, we, we had prayed for people and uh, we had laid hands on people. But all of a sudden, people began to worship. People began to jump and began to shout and began to run around the church. And, you know, it was one of those things where, I'll be honest with you, I didn't know what to do. Sometimes that's the best thing we can do when God starts moving is just do nothing. Just follow Him. Amen? People began to run and shout and were just being blessed by the power of God. And somebody came forward with a prophetic word and just said, this is what this church has been praying for. This is what we were believing, believing for. This it was not a revival. It was just a conference. And not, not minimizing and conferences important, but you know what I'm saying? There was no expectation of an extended service. But the power of God hit that place and somebody came forward and said, this is the move of God we've been praying for and believing for. Uh, I don't know how long that that went on. But we just vasted in the presence of God. We left that service that night once again without the expectation of doing anything else. They had services. This is a Friday night. They had services all day Saturday. And then they had services all day Sunday. Uh, and then they closed it out with a Sunday afternoon or evening service. So, uh, man, this was heavy on my heart that God was up to something at that church. Saturday afternoon, I remember, we had company in town who had come to visit from out of town and wanted to be in service with us and wanted to go to that special service. And I remember we were sitting outside just fire uh, around, a, around a campfire and was just fellowshipping and talking. But my heart, I felt the heaviness of that move of God. I felt God was wanting to do something. And uh, that afternoon, I'm, as I'm sitting there, uh, the, the, the young man that uh, organized the conference and put it together called me and said, uh, Brother Benny, you know, what are you thinking about this, this? You know, what are you thinking? I said, man, I just feel like God's up to something big. And I feel like that uh, God wants to do something. And he said, I felt the same way. Said that they had been talking and they wanted me to come back. And so uh, I, don't, I think it was... Uh, I was, it wasn't Sunday night, it was Monday because they closed the conference out Sunday. Uh, they wanted me to come back Monday, Monday night. We broke out into a week of revival. In fact, on Monday night, people came from everywhere. This was about, oh, I don't know, two hours, two and a half hours from my house. Um, All we, the only advertisement we sent out, we, I think we put it out, we posted it on social media, and we sent out an email that just simply said we had a move of God, that revival uh, had broke out down in southern Iowa. I want you to know people came from everywhere. It was just a spontaneous fire, an awesome move of God. Man, we were hungry for it, but but I believe one of the keys to this, for, you know, hunger is a, is a key. You've got to be hungry for revival. If you can get people together that are hungry for a move of God, there's going to be a move of God. People in the community, community from different churches that will come together that's hungry for a move of God, you are going to have a move of God. Um, Praying and fasting, man, that's important. We'll talk about all these things and more, but but there is something about the waiting process. Don't get weary in well-doing. Let, let me read a uh, just a brief passage of Scripture to you. I'm going to read to you from the book of St. John, chapter 5, uh, verse 2. This is one of my favorite Scriptures, one of my favorite Scriptures in the whole Bible. But it says this, St. John, chapter 5, verses, one and, uh, verses 2 and 3. It says, Now there is is at Jerusalem by the sheep market, a pool which is called in the Hebrew tongue Bethesda, having five porches. In these lay a great multitude of impotent folks, blind, halted, withered, waiting for a moving 
of the water. Boy, I love that scripture. The Bible says that there was a whole bunch of people that were, uh, the Bible says there were the, the blind, uh, it says the, the, uh, the, the lame, uh, every the death, the mute, any, any sickness that you could imagine, they had all gathered around the pool because the Bible says that one time a year an angel would come down and stir that water. Supernaturally, the water would begin to move. And the first one into that pool would get healed by the power of, the, of, of God. So what I take away from this passage of Scripture is they were waiting uh, one time a year. They waited 365 days. Now there had to have been an idea that we know that today the water moved. Somebody got their miracle. So it, they knew that there was another 365 days or however that time span worked. It could have been the miracle could have happened the week before, the week after. I don't understand the logistics of this. But one time a year, not, not a specified time according to the scripture, that the angel would come and stir the water and the first one in would get healed. The people with expectation were waiting on a move. Friend, I'm, I'm waiting on a move of God. I, I, this weekend, I'm so excited about the revival. We are, we, we are going over to Poto, Oklahoma, and I believe we are going to have a move of the Holy Ghost. Watch for updates on this. You'll be watching this. We will have already had the first uh, meeting, but I really believe that I have a great expectation of God doing great things and this being a meeting that is going to be life-changing. There is an expectation. I've been waiting on this move, move, this meeting. Um, I have felt like for some time now, the Lord told me that there was a revival that was getting ready to break out in our ministry. And uh, I'm just going to tell you, we've been through some things in this year that lets me know God is setting us up for the miraculous. God is setting us up for a breakthrough. God is setting us up for revival. Amen. Don't, don't you want revival? Don't you want to experience revival? They were waiting on a move of God. There was a need there. They had a need. Uh, they, they needed vision. They, they needed to be touched by the power of God. They needed their feet healed. They needed their legs healed. Maybe you're watching right now and you're waiting on a move of God. You're waiting on God to move for your family. You need salvation. You need miracles. You, you need a move of God. Well, friend, I believe God sent me across your path today to tell you that a move of God is coming. There's a move of God coming to your life. There's a healing coming to you. There's a breakthrough coming to you. There's a salvation coming to your family. There's a financial breakthrough headed to you right now. Somebody under the sound of my voice, you're about to have the greatest year you've ever had financially. You're about to have the greatest healing that, you're, that you've ever seen. God's healing eyes right now. I feel I feel like there's backs being touched right now. I feel the Holy Ghost right now on my right arm. There's somebody getting a miracle in your right arm right now. You've been experiencing some numbness and some pain. God's healing it right now. Uh, listen, I believe this. Waiting, You've been waiting for your healing. You've been waiting for your miracle. You've been waiting. Uh, but in the midst of all of this, Jesus was making his way to this very spot. Oh, come on, somebody. In the midst of your waiting, while you're waiting, while it doesn't look like anything's happening, while they looked and the water did not look like it was stirring, while they stood there and they were in pain and they still couldn't see or they still couldn't hear or leprosy covered their body or they were still lame in their feet and they were still broken in their body, Jesus was headed their way. When they looked at the water and there was no stirring in the water, there was nothing happening. Friend, have you ever been there? Have you ever been at the place where you looked at the water and there was nothing happening? You looked at your life. You looked at your ministry. You looked at your business. You looked at your job and there was nothing happening. You hadn't had an increase in years. You hadn't had a raise in years. You hadn't had a breakthrough in years. Your ministry was just like it had always been. Nobody getting saved. Nobody getting healed. Nobody getting set free, but you're hungry for it. Friend, I'm here to tell you your time has drawn nigh unto you. Somebody ought to claim that word. That word may not be for everyone.
everybody, but it's for somebody. Your time has drawn itself unto you. It's time for your miracle. It's time for your breakthrough. It's time for you to get set free. Jesus is on his way. Oh, come on, somebody. Woo, man, I feel the Holy Ghost pray, praying. To, I feel that strong on uh, the, somebody's right side of their body. God's healing you right now. Maybe you've had, you've had a stroke in the right side of your body. You've been having problems. God's healing you right now. Claim that healing. If uh, we call something out that relates to you, man, make sure to go ahead and contact this ministry. Let us know. Email us, Facebook us, uh, 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 but contact us in some way. Let us know that you received that word and God healed you. Amen. Listen, um, a few, few years ago, while we were still pastoring, I, I remember God had me do a specific teaching on Wednesday night. I was teaching on the prophetic, and uh, I, 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 we just finished this series on the prophetic, and it, it was a powerful series. We still have the CDs, and man, you know, I mean, it just just been a blessing to us. But but um, this uh, just closed out this service. This was a Wednesday night. This was a Bible study. We had classes going on all over the church. We had the, the teens downstairs, the kids, the nursery. We had the adults in the sanctuary. You know, we, uh, once again, we were, uh, this sounds terrible, we didn't have the expectation of revival that night. We were, it was a Wednesday night service. Now, I always expect God to move every service. Expect somebody to get healed. We pray for the sick always. We pray for salvation always. But you know, you understand what I'm saying? It was, you know, we we weren't in a rut and anything like that. It was just just a service, and God caught us by surprise. At the end of that service, I closed my Bible and began to pray and said, Lord, you know, just touch the people, and we release this word and we're thankful for it. And friend, just right there, just standing there, the Holy Ghost began to touch people. The power of God began to minister to people. Just, just man, just like I said, in that moment, it, it was awesome. You know, power of God was just moving such a powerful way. All of a sudden, people began to cry. People began to move. And there was no music being played. We didn't have, uh, nobody was playing on the keyboard. We did not have uh, music playing over the, the PA system. It was just a sovereign moment where God just showed up. See, while we were teaching, while we were striving to do what God had called us to do, what He told us to do, man, the spirit of revival just hit hit us. Man, it was it was awesome. I mean, just a moment. As people began to weep and and began to just the Holy Ghost just took over. You know, once again we didn't know how to respond. You know, and I mean those are the best moments. You know, sometimes, you know, people say I always have a plan and it's not that we didn't have a plan in place. We have structure, we had order, but I'm also open to God coming in and just taking over. I'm all right with that. I, I, are, you, are you all right with that, friend? I, I, I am. Listen, we began to just worship God and after, I don't know, maybe 20 minutes, we just opened the altars up. Now, the way that our system worked on a Wednesday night, we started at seven o'clock. At eight o'clock, we were we were pretty much done. You know, we had just a few minutes of worship, and the the teaching usually lasts about forty five minutes. And um, you know, I mean, you know, within a few minutes, with reason, we might be done at eight o five. But but really, right around that eight o'clock mark, at about eight thirty. The children began to come up from upstairs and you know there was no way to communicate hey guys there's a sovereign move of God happening in the sanctuary and people were in the altars and we, you know I I wasn't leading the service the Holy Ghost was leading the service as people just cried and wept and just vasted in the presence of God I think the most impressive thing that happened I think just you know especially as a pastor as a minister as a leader as I was leading the service as they began to come up People were in the altars. Nobody had left. You know, you just couldn't move. You couldn't leave. And as we um, were worshiping God, the children came in. And just without even being told, they just came in and filtered into the altars, found a place of prayer, and just sought God. Oh, it was just a spontaneous move of God. It was. I, I believe there's a spirit of revival. I believe the Holy Ghost comes in in, in such a powerful way and and just brings a spirit of revival, a spirit of renewal. 
and we just were lost. I don't know how long we were there. I, I'll be honest, I just, I don't know. But we were so overcome for so long just in the presence of God. Man, that, once again, we just tarried. We just waited. We were just so hungry for a move of God, so hungry for God to pour out His Spirit that whatever He wanted to do, listen, you can't make it happen. You can't force it ha to happen. You just gotta just got to allow God to do it. You know, you just got to be willing. Be willing to tarry. Be, be willing to wait on a move of God. Man, woo, I feel it. I feel it right now. I feel like there are many of you under the sound of my voice right now. You've been waiting and you've been tarrying. And I, I believe that the Holy Spirit wants me to share with you today. Your wait is over. God's moving for you. Your miracle's on the way. The Bible says that there was a man... There was a certain man who had an infirmity, the Bible says in verse 5, for eight years. For eight years. And the Bible says that Jesus comes entering the place. Now listen, I, I, I'm excited about angelic activity. I believe in angelic activity. The Bible says that God will that there are angels encamped around those that serve and fear God. The Bible tells us that He will send us ministering angels. The Bible says to be careful because we entertain angels. Uh, angels unaware. I mean, I believe in in angelic activity. But listen, if I wanna if I wanna be with somebody heavenly, I wanna be with Jesus. Now, I, I don't mean I wanna die, but I wanna experience Jesus. This man is laying here, and he's for eight years he suffered with an infirmity, and Jesus is on his way. As we tarry, as we wait. I believe Jesus is on his way. I believe Jesus is going to come in and bring salvation. There, Listen, there are, there are so many benefits to revival. There are so many benefits. And one of them is the manifestation of God's presence in the house that brings people to a place of healing, miracles, signs, and wonders. And listen, we've been in revival. I shared just a little bit last week about a revival that that my mom received a miracle and my mom had a form of leukemia and in that revival all the way back to 1993 God healed her my wife had we, we weren't married yet we we met dur during this time frame but my my wife was there my wife had a kidney disorder was 24 hours from a dialysis machine and and God healed her um, when revival comes, healings are going to come. Healings are the sounding call, the dinner bell to the lost. You hear me? How are we going to reach? How are we going to reach Muslims, Buddhists? How are we going to reach all these people? We are going to pray for their sick children, their sick family members, and God's going to heal them. Woo! Come on, somebody! Revival. Revival is an atmosphere that this this can take place in. There is something about those repetitive services, you know. Listen, maybe I've been in situations where first couple services of a meeting, you know, they just just were just kind of there, you know, just kind of going through the motions. But there is a moment when revival will hit. Uh, now, you know, I believe God has to put it in your heart. Uh, I believe that you got to work if, as an evangelist, as a traveling minister. You got to work with the pastor. As a pastor, I worked with our evangelists, and to see successful meetings, you know, I recognize we were doing a kingdom work together, but people will start being healed. There is an element of blessing that comes in. People are blessed financially, financially blessed, physically, emotionally uplifted. Um, I, I know that when we're in revival, there, there can be extended services. They can last a long time. I understand that. But there is a there is a blessing that comes <clears throat> that even though you've been in service for what feels like all day, Spirit of God touches you and hits you, and uh, all of a sudden it doesn't feel like you've been there so long. And you get up the next day and you're ready for work and you're ready for school and everything kind of goes as it should because there is a spirit of revival there. There is a moving. Of the, of, of the waters. They, the Bible says in John chapter 5, they were waiting for a moving. They were waiting for a move. They were waiting for a move of God. As we tarry, as we wait, I believe that God will honor that waiting with a move of God. 
Listen, friend, uh, don't get weary in well-doing. You, you, you may be right there where we were. Um, this was 2000, 2008, 2009. In 2010, we had a life-changing citywide revival break out on our church there in Waterloo, Iowa. We had an evangelist come in. We had people come from all over America. Uh, literally, our church was already a melting pot from the world. We had people from all over the world that attended our church because of the college. But... This revival broke out, and we churches working together, and uh, pastors working with uh, uh, with the people, and the people working with uh, uh, the evangelists and the church, and it was just awesome. You know, I, God's got. It came, I believe, it was a process of tarrying and waiting, ex, waiting with expectation. That don't mean just waiting. You know, idly doing nothing. Sometimes we wear waiting as a badge. Waiting should not be a badge. Waiting while we pray, I'm going to wait. While we're waiting, I'm going to pray. While we're waiting, I'm going to fast. While we're waiting, I'm going to believe. Amen. Don't get weary in the waiting. Listen, thank you so much for being a part of this broadcast today. I'm so thankful that you tuned in. I pray that you'll tune in next week and be a part of these special messages. We we love each and every one of our partners. We thank you for being with us. And listen, I, I believe God sent me here to tell you, many of you, your wait's over and your best is yet to come. We'll see you next time. Praise God. I hope that you're enjoying today's broadcast. It is such a privilege and honor to have you tune in today, taking time out of your busy day with so much going on to listen to this broadcast. I, and I hope it's been a great blessing to you. Before we let you go for the day, we just want to ask you to, to sow into this ministry. Man, we, are, we have such a privilege to make such a big impact on the United States of America and around the world. Right now, through our broadcast ministry, through our revivals, Facebook, YouTube, all the things that we're doing, we are reaching potentially 50 million people every week with the gospel of Jesus Christ. And we want to do more. We want to do so much more for the kingdom of God. And you can help us do that. Maybe you can't go around the world and preach uh, like Prophet Benny does, but but you can help me do it. And uh, I want you to know someday when we stand before the Lord, the Lord will uh, give you the same reward because you couldn't go, but you sent someone. Amen. So I'm asking you, help send us around the world with the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. I believe that God will bless you for it. I believe that one of the jobs of the prophet is to declare blessing over God's people, just like the widow who just had a little bit of meal and a little bit of oil. But God sent her Elijah, who spoke a prophetic word over her, and because of her obedience, God opened the windows of heaven, and her meal didn't run out, her oil didn't run out, and he, she, and the entire family ate during the time of famine. And then Elisha, Elisha, a woman comes to him who has nothing but a little bit of oil. And the Bible says, he said, go and borrow vessels, as many as you can, and pour in those vessels, and then go and pay your debts. Amen, and live on the rest. Oh, that's what an awesome word. That's what the prophetic does, my friend. So I believe as you sow into this prophetic ministry, God will allow the same blessing, the same miracles that we see to be imparted into your life and into your ministry. So again, I can't thank you enough for being a part of this broadcast today. All the information is right there on the screen. So go ahead and go to our webpage, uh, pay, PayPal, Cash App, all the ways to give. We appreciate your faithfulness so much. And listen, before you, uh, before you just sow once, go ahead and become a monthly partner. You can uh, partner with us every month and we'll send you a newsletter and updates on the ministry and let you, go and let you know what's going on. It'll be a great blessing to you a great blessing to us in the kingdom of God. So thank you so much for tuning in. We will see you about this time next week. God bless. Have your best day ever.